my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, my enemy, my faith and trust I put all in thee. Put all in thee. Believe you got the world in your hand. You bless me, Lord, I know I can stand. Now we will have the reading of the law. Exodus 20 chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So, sisters and brothers, we thank God for the reading of the law. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, most people don't even pay attention, but the Lord said that the Sabbath day is a sign between him and his people. And that's not just stopping with Israel. It's anybody that honors the Lord's Sabbath day. That's why when we look at Sunday, I wonder who is that a sign between? <laughs> but we're not going to get into that. This is, this is the Psalmation system, brothers, of the Feast of the Lord. And title is called the Feast of the Lord. All of the feasts that the Lord gave in 23rd chapter of Leviticus is a part of God's plan. We don't keep feasts like Purim, you know, when all Israel was supposed to be destroyed. And we don't keep uh, 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 the dedication and we don't keep any other these feasts that you got a lot of brothers and, and Esau keeps. 
We only keep the feast in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Because these feasts in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, sisters and brothers, is all about salvation. The Lord is letting you know what he is doing. Just to know that we Hebrew Israelite is, is not enough, sisters and brothers. Every one of us knew, every one of our forefathers knew that they was Hebrew Israelite when the Lord drove them out of the land and scattered us into captivity all over the creation. If you are not teaching about salvation and becoming what God created you to be, and that is a being just like him and his family, which is called God also, if you're not teaching that, then you're wasting your time. I don't care how you talk in the streets. I don't care how many meetings you have. If you're not teaching salvation and becoming God, you are wasting your time and everybody else. But we're going to start this on the Lord's Feast because the Lord has all this laid out because now you're going to learn how much time God gave man. Because God didn't create man and say, well, you know, I'm going to let it go until... Uh, Things fall the way I wanted. He have a time period that he has set us inside of, sister and brother. And when that time is over, man will cease to exist. Oh, brother, what do you mean we all going to evaporate? No. You won't be man no more. You're going to be, be God. I remember when I first told people that we, that we were going to become God, they fainted all over creation. Oh, brother, you lost your mind. Oh, you... <laughs> God is a uniplural word. It's not a singular, a uniplural. God. One family, but more than one member. Right now, there's two under the heading of God. The one that's called the Father and the one that's called the Son. The reason I say it is called the Father and called the Son, because in the beginning there was no Father and Son. It was just these two eternal beings, sisters and brothers. Now, they decided to create some more beings just like themselves. And when we serve the time that God gave us and we do the things that God told us to do, we will be God. Just like everybody in here is man, M-A-N. That's a singular, isn't it? Male and female. But it's not one person. Everybody that's under the, uh, 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 every person that's called a human being is man, M-A-N. But this plan here, these feasts that the Lord have us keep, they're not just a thing for us to go through rituals. Most people keeping feasts, they're going through rituals. That's most people name themselves after, uh, after something here, like we had people that call themselves Pentecostal. Now, I'll never forget when me and Brother Marsha, me and Johnny was in business. We used to have a business called Control Temperature Incorporated. And we had a young brother that had been to refrigeration school, and he wanted to get high. He coming in, and we got to talking. He said, and, and, he, and we asked him, what's your, what, what's your faith? Oh, I'm a Pentecostal. Then we asked him, oh, do you keep the day of Pentecost? What's that? You should not serve or participate in anything that you don't understand, sister and brother. And this is what this is all about. And we're going to start this in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. It's all about understanding. The Lord said we, every individual, have to work out their own salvation. Now, if you have to work out your own salvation, then you need to know how, don't you? Preacher can't deliver you. I can't deliver you. You're the only one that can deliver you. Only thing I can do is teach you how to deliver you. And that's by teaching the word of God. That's why I say all the time, I don't have no dog in this fight. I'm just going to teach what's in the book. If it's not in the book, you, you, will, you will not hear it taught in the Israel of God. And we're going to start this in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. And once you understand this chapter, you know what your God is doing. We're going to start at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Okay, read it. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Go ahead. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Speak unto the children and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, not the feast of the Jews, mm. sisters and brothers. The feast of the Lord. And that needs to resonate with you. Because once you understand that it's the feast of the Lord, then you say everybody that's serving the Lord is supposed to be keeping this feast. Right. I don't care what nationality you come out of. Go ahead and read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Uh huh. Even these are my feasts. Go ahead. Six now you got to have a, a proclaim to be holy convocation. That means that you are supposed to come together on these holy gathering. You can't sit at your house and say, well, you know, what the Lord said, two or more, when there's two or more among us, the Lord is. He ain't talking about that. He's talking about coming together as a group of holy people. So you can put forth the plan of God. Go ahead and read. Six, six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And holy convocation. Go ahead. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So six days shall work be done, sister and brother. But the se seventh day is the Sabbath day and you shall have a holy convocation. This day, it is a commandment to have a holy convocation. This is not a suggestion. Six days you should work, and on the seventh day is the Sabbath in all of your dwelling, sister and brother. And what does this mean? God gave man seven days. And after the seven days is up, there is no more man. I want you to put this on uh, this seven day. See, people don't understand about the weekly Sabbath day. I want you to put it up on the board. God gave you seven days. And these seven days represent 7,000 years because each day in the scripture tells you that the day with the Lord is 1,000 years. Now we're going to put this up or we're going to have a slow day today. <laughs> all right. So that's all he gave you. Seven days from the beginning to the end. After the seven days is all went, it won't be no more. Verse 4, go ahead and read. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Let's, before I go, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, skip, go to verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocation. Even holy convocation. Which ye shall proclaim in their season. Which you shall proclaim in their season. What do you mean, which you shall proclaim in their season? You're doing what it's time to do it. Like people can have communion every first Sunday, every, uh, twi every t uh, 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 third Sunday. Communion is supposed to represent the Passover. Communion is not in the book. So if you're going to have his feast in the day, in, in the time that he's set, then you have to have it on the day that he's set. Well, I'm going to serve God real good. I'm going to have a communion every Sabbath day, or uh, every Sunday, not Sabbath day. Don't work that. Verse 5, go, did you finish 4? Yes, we did. Go ahead. And the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Uh-huh. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. On the 14th day, on the 14th day of the month shall be the Lord's Passover, sister and brother. On the 14th day. We'll deal with the rest of it later. The reason I'm stressing this is because God give a date. He said the Lord's Passover. We keep that every year. But keep your marker here because we're going to be in and out of here every, uh, all afternoon. So let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter, and we're going to show you what Jesus then was keeping. Huh? Exodus 12, I'm sorry. We're going to go and pick up the Passover. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I guess the choir kind of mugged me with three songs this time. I used to have some control around here. That's gone. And they used to tell me what they're going to do in the beginning. Well, Brother Booth, we're going to have three songs today. Nobody thought about that. Well, you know it when you get it. 
Exodus chapter 12, we're going to start verse, at verse 1. This is the Lord's Passover. And sisters and brothers, it means what it says. 12 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. Uh -huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, see, the Lord set this at the beginning, this particular. That's why our year don't start in January, sisters and brothers. The Lord set the month. Our, month uh, 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 our year start in Abel. And Abib always start either side around the last of April or the first of March. So the Lord said, this shall be the beginning of the month. So I'm going with the Lord's month mm -hmm. that he said beginning. Go ahead and read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, uh -huh. In the tenth day of this month, Go ahead. they shall take to them every man a lamb. In the tenth day of this month. Pay attention to that word. In the tenth day of this month shall everybody take the whole congregation take unto them a lamb. Go ahead and read. According to the house of their fathers, go ahead. a lamb for an house. Now skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It's got to be perfect. Go ahead and read. A male of the first year. Got to be a male, and it's got to be the firstborn. Go ahead and read. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Uh-huh. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Go ahead. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, this lamb, you got to keep it up until the 14th day of the month, Abib, the same month. And then Israel, the whole assembly going to kill it that evening. That's when the sun go down, sister. Uh, uh, that's, when the, uh, uh, that's when the sun go down. That's when the evening It's actually dark, if you want to know the truth. But you cannot, like right now we got people that don't recognize Jesus, and they're still keeping the Passover. They go down to the supermarket, and they buy them some lamb. There's something wrong with that. First thing is, you got to get a you got to get a female lamb. Then the first male, the, the first male, uh, 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 one that she have got to be a male. Then you got to examine that lamb and make sure it don't have a blemish on it. Then you got to put it up on on the tenth day of the month Abel, and then you kill it on the fourteenth day of the same month. So when the people go down to uh, Jewels or Dominic's. Or some other meat seller and get them a lamb, they're not do, keeping the law. Like I say all the time, if you are going to do wrong, learn how to do wrong right. <laughs> you just can't come and buy no lamb. You got to do it like that. What verse was that? We have verse 7. Go ahead and read. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. I wonder what would happen in your apartment. You live in an apartment. You come and put some slops and blood over the door. I wonder what you're going to do. You're going to be evicted so quick they won't know, even know you was in there. But he said, that's what you do. Go ahead and read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, Go ahead. and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Now, the Lord letting you know that this is going to be quick, which once what I'm, what I'm getting ready to do these Egyptians are going to get rid of you post haste. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, uh -huh. your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Because you finna get thrown out of here. <laughs> go ahead and read. And you shall eat it in haste. Uh huh. It is the Lord's Passover. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And let's look and see what Passover means. You know, sometimes it means exactly what it says. People read something in the Bible where, you know, uh, that must be a hidden meaning. I said, what does it say? Keep reading. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, Go ahead. both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Go ahead. I am the Lord. So I'm going to pass through and I'm going to kill everything, the firstborn of everything, man and beast in Egypt. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And the blood shall be for you upon, uh, for a token upon the house here. A token of what? A token of your faith, mm -hmm. sisters and brother. Habakkuk told you the just shall live by his faith. 
If you believe God, then Moses, uh, the message that God gave Moses, you put the blood over your doorpost. Right. If you didn't believe him, you didn't do it. So if you don't have no faith, you don't have no work, you don't have no work, you're going to end up dead. Even eternal life, death. Think about it, sister and brother. This should be a token unto you. Go ahead. Upon the houses where ye are. Uh -huh. And when I see the blood. And when I see the Israelite. When I see the blood. When I see the, the thief and the robber or the righteous man and woman. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. Because no matter what you've been or what you have not been, once you do what God say, all your evil won't be mentioned. I want you all to understand. See, sometimes people get off in a lesson. They leave out the spiritual part. I don't care how good you've been and how long did you walk in the word, but the day that you lose your faith and don't do what God say, then you left the blood away from your doorpost, and the evil and the, and the death angel is going to come in and get you because your goodness won't be remembered. You are not saved forever. Go ahead and read. What, what, what part are we? Middle of verse 13. Go ahead. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, uh -huh. and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So that's what it means. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Passover actually means he's going to pass over you because your faith has shown him that you're going to do what thus said the Lord. And this is a feast. Go ahead and read. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, uh -huh. and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. It's you a memorial, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers, and you shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generation. What does memorial mean? It's going to remind you what the Lord did. And once you get some understanding, it's going to remind you what the Lord is going to do. That's why we keep these feasts, sisters and brothers. And we ought to keep these feasts throughout your generation. Finish that. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, Jesus was keeping the same feast, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Matthew, the 26th uh, uh, 26 chapter. He was keeping the same feast. People say they're Christian, but they don't do what Christ did. I can't understand that. You got an organization out here running themselves, call themselves a, 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 a bunch of Hebrews. Let me see. Let me see. I-U-I-C. Israel united in Christ but they don't believe in the water baptism. How you going to get under, into the covenant of, of it? Sometimes wow. you pick a name, and when they look at, at your behavior, they didn't let us know how uninformed you are. But we're going to get us some understanding of these feasts today. Matthew's 26. Matthew chapter 26. Because, sister and brother, that's why we read this book. That's why we take time. I want everybody to read it. Too many people are listening to people tell them stuff, and you forget it. And you don't have no reference with you. You can't go back later on and check it. 26 and verse 17. 26 and 17. Go ahead. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, go ahead. the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where would thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Now, you have, don't you know you have brothers, Hebrew Israelites, running out here around this sand of the Passover and, Hebrew, and, and, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is this on the same day because they read this? That's why, sisters and brothers, Peter told you that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Passover is on the 14th day. And, we're gonna, and we just read and we're going to read it again. That unleavened bread is on the 15th day. Mm -hmm. When is it that 14 and 15 have merged in anybody's math, in any time by this time? They're not showing you how smart you are. They're showing how, I hate to say it, I just got to say it, how dumb you are. And you have people believing you and following that. But you don't see the spiritual part of it. You're going to see it today. But verse, we're in verse 18. Go ahead. And he said, go into the city to such a man uh -huh. and say unto him, 
the master saith, my time is at hand. Uh -huh. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. I will keep the communion at my house. The Passover. Sacrament. The Passover. Oh, now we understand that, don't we? But I don't know where those other terms come from, but it didn't come out of this book. No. And the Lord told you in Revelation, the 20th chapter, that you're going to be judged according to the thing that's written in this book. And according to your works. Well, when I keep the Passover, that's what he wanted to know. Go ahead and read. And the, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And they made ready the Passover. Now skip down to verse 26. Verse 26, and go ahead. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples. Uh-huh. And said, take, eat, this is my body. Go ahead. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, uh -huh. drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Now look, you get people that don't believe, keep the Sabbath, Sabbath day or nothing that the Lord said, or none of these feasts, how is it then they would know about the Passover? So I want you to take, eat. This is, this is, a, this is a, 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 my blood shed for the remission of sin. Go ahead. But I say unto you, uh -huh. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of this vine of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you and my Father's kingdom. So I'm not going to keep this Passover no more, Jesus said, until I do it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. That used to really puzzle me because Jesus is going to run this whole life for a thousand years and he is not going to keep the Passover. I couldn't understand that. But then the Lord brought it to my attention. That is, the Passover is generation to generation to generation. Every day that God gave man, somebody sinned. Didn't he? So if somebody sinned all seven days, then he had to have a, then that blood had to be over their doorpost seven days. So the Passover, when Jesus died on the cross, that was the beginning of the Passover. But what about the next generation? You mean, ain't nobody going to sin after that? We got us a little problem there. What verse was that? 29. You finished it? Yes. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, because this blood means something, sisters and brothers, and we're going to get us some spiritual meaning out of this. Once you get the spiritual understanding, you don't make mistakes. Because you look at it from every side. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, uh, 5, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 5. Look like everybody, everything come out of the 15th chapter, but not this. 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. And this is what uh, some of the people that call themselves Christians should read this and understand it. I say call themselves Christian because if you're Christ-like, then you do just what he do. Verse 7, go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Go ahead and read. That ye may be a new lump. Uh-huh. As ye are unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Oh, so now we know who that lamb represents, mm -hmm. don't we? It represented Jesus. To whom Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Purge out the old leaven. Go ahead and read. Therefore, let us keep the feast, uh -huh. not with the old leaven, Go ahead. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. What feast is this? Unleavened. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. See, leavening represents sin, sisters and brothers. If you are not purged by the blood of Jesus, then you are still in your sins. I don't care who you are. That's why unleavened bread came after the Passover. You cannot be clean before the blood is shed. But once the blood is shed, then you're supposed to stay clean the rest of the time that God gave you. Now let's go back and look at it. It's no accident, coincident rather, that the scripture is like it is. Let's go back to the 25th chapter of Leviticus. Uh, uh, 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23. 
Let's go back and look at it, sister and brother. See, these things, the Lord line up, and if you don't have spiritual understanding and you're trying to do them, you're just going through rituals. And Stevie Wonder had a song out there, when you believe in things that you, understand, that you don't understand, you're in trouble. It is all that simple. Leviticus 23 now we're going to start at 6. Start back at 6. 23 and 6. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month. And on is, the 14th day. And on the 15th day of the same month. Of the same month. Go ahead. Is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of of unleavened bread. Go ahead and read. Unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. In other words, once you have been purged, you're supposed to go the rest of your time being free. In a, you know, people were sin uh, uh, inadvertently, not intentionally. Well, then... That's what the blood is for, the wash you of it. But you can't just get baptized and come out of it and just keep doing what you're doing, keep sneaking in your neighbor's back door, keep robbing everybody and lying on everybody. Once you come out of that blood, you're supposed to walk the walk. When once you come out of that water. So, in other words, when you eat that unleavened bread for seven days, sisters and brothers, that is letting you know, that is reminding you, you got to stay clean. One day at a time, you got to stay clean. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but today I'm going to stay clean. And when tomorrow I get here, it'll be the day again, won't it? I'm going to stay clean. What verse? We have verse 8. Go ahead. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Uh-huh. And the seventh day is in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Now, we don't do the offering anymore, sisters and brothers, since Jesus died. But you're supposed to have a holy convocation. On the first day, and you shall have a holy convocation on the seventh day. But what do you have here? Seven days. Now, put up the seven days for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because I'm just letting you know that the Lord is telling you to do the same thing over and over again. The seven days with the, with the blood over it, okay? Now you got the Feast of Unleavened Bread. How many days is that? Once you had the Passover, then you had seven days of unleavened bread. Why seven days? Because seven days is all God gave man, which represents seven days thousand years. You understand? You cannot have the feast of unleavened bread and the Passover on the same day because the Lord wanted to make it clear. Even though man sinned on the first day, the Lord wanted to make it clear that you cannot be sin free unless you have been purged by the blood. That's simple to me. Is that too hard to understand? You can't jump the, bridge, jump the water, and you can't swim in the water until you get there. So seven days you ought to keep this feast. So you had seven days, God's trying to give you a message. Seven days he gave you, the week of Sabbath day, he's telling you, man, you got 7,000 years now to get this thing right. Then he turned around and, and purged your sin because you done messed up. Then he said, now you still got 7,000 years to get this thing right. So you got to get it right, because if you don't, you don't want to deal with the consequences. Now let's go into Exodus, 12th chapter. Exodus, the 12th chapter. Because it's all about understanding, sisters and brothers. Minister and soul, the people on uh, uh, drama and showmanship. No, it's all about understanding. Learn this word so you can save yourself. And this is what it's all about. Now, Exodus 12, we're going to start reading at verse 15. Exodus 12 and 15. Okay, go ahead. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. 
Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Now that's leaven bread, sisters and brother. Because people gonna call me, but well, brother boy, do I, you know, I have to put my yeast out and my baking soda and my, no. It is the feast of unleavened bread, not unleavened agent. If it's not in bread, then the bread is not going to rise because leaven means to rise. Seven days you should eat unleavened bread, and the first day you should put, the leaven, put away leaven out of your houses. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now, why would God cut you off because you decided not to eat a piece of bread? Because the unleavened means sin-free. So he said, if you return to your sin, God going to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what this is saying? I have cleansed you and purged you with my own blood. Now you're going to turn around and sin again. You're going to be cut off. It's not just for eating bread because we're not talking about bread here. This bread represents something else. I used to wonder, why would God cut somebody off just for eating an at least un I might forget to eat some unleavened bread. Why would he cut me off? But then I saw the spiritual side of it, what it stands for. And this is what a lot of people don't understand, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And the first day should be a holy convocation. This is what we're having right now, holy convocation. Go ahead and read. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. To and you. in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. Go ahead. No manner of work shall be done in them. Go ahead. Save that which every man must eat, that now, only may be done of you. Now, you're supposed to do no manner of work in this day, except what it takes, what you're going to eat. That's why when we keep the feast, sometimes it falls, you know, we, we, have, we, we cooking everything else on that because, but we cooking for the feast. You can't cook for your own house. People call me every, can I cook for my husband? Tell your husband to go to the feast and eat. Well, he don't even believe in it. Then let him starve. Don't let him get you cut off. You understand? Ain't nowhere in the book where the Lord says you got to do wrong for, uh, that if your husband tell you to do it. I even give you two examples. When one did right, saved her household, he killed him but saved her, and she ended up marrying the king. Another one went along with her husband. The Lord killed both of them. When you sin because your husband says you sin, you're not being delivered. What you're doing is adding barbecue, meat to the barbecue. Y'all understand? Go ahead and read what verse? Verse 17. Uh huh. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Now, the Israelite, most Hebrew, they look at this physical side. We keep it because this is when the Lord brought us out of Egypt. Yeah, he did that. However, unleavened bread really means sin free. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19, and go ahead. Seven days shall, shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Now, we know that the Lord ain't talking about cutting off Israelites and the stranger because they forgot to eat a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. We know the real meaning, don't we? But you still eat your bread now. Because I don't want you to stand before the Lord and say, well, Brother Bush said, well, it only means don't, you don't get to eat the bread. No, you got to do that too. Yeah. It's just like buying a ticket from here to China when they didn't have no plane. You have to get you a bus or train ticket, but you have to get you a boat ticket too, don't you? You got to do it all. Now, let's go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Because this unleavened bread had to come after the Passover because unless you were purged by the blood, your sins will not be passed over. Leviticus 23, and we're going to start in verse 9. Leviticus 23 and verse 9. Because all of this means something, sister and brother, and we want to make sure that you understand all of these feast days. Verse 9, go ahead. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Go ahead. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, uh -huh. and shall reap the harvest thereof, Go ahead. then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now, once you come into the land, he says, and when you reap the harvest, that's after you've planted what you're going to plant, you're going to get a sheaf of it and bring it to the priest. What's he going to do with it? Go ahead and read. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. Go ahead. To be accepted for you. Uh huh. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So he's going to get this sheaf of harvest and he's going to wave it before the Lord so the Lord will accept it. Then you can eat of it. But what day do you do it? Tomorrow after the Sabbath day. Not on the Sabbath day. They have a great meaning, sisters and brothers. And what day is the Sabbath day? That's on the seventh day. Isn't it? That's the last day, isn't it? So you cannot wave that sheaf on the Sabbath day. You cannot wave that sheaf in the middle of the week. It has to be waved tomorrow after the Sabbath day, which is the first day of the week, which men call Sunday. This is the one feast that's constant. No matter what it is, it is constant because it have a greater meaning than all of the feasts put together. Go ahead and read. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now when you make that wave sheaf offering of the first fruit, then you got to offer a he lamb. A male of the first year. He got to be the firstborn. He got to be offered along with that first fruit. Because this he lamb we're going to show you is the first fruit. And you're going to wave it before the Lord. That was 12, right? That was 12. Skip down and read verse 14. Go ahead. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, uh -huh. nor green ears, Go ahead. until the selfsame day uh -huh. that you have brought an offering unto your God, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So he said, you can't eat nothing of your crop. No matter what you raise, you can't eat none of it until you go and wave a sheaf of it before the Lord and sacrifice a he lamb on the first fruit to the Lord. Then you can go and participate. Who does this rep? Who does this? Uh, who does this uh, 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 represent, sister and brother? We're gonna show it's Jesus. We got people that can't put this together, but we're gonna show you. Let's go into Saint John, the twentieth chapter. Saint John, the twentieth chapter. I said, you just go and let the book tell you. Instead of want to argue all the time, we say, I don't see it that way. It's not about what you don't see. It's about what is written. Now, this is after they done crucified Jesus, sister and brother. This kind of kills several things, especially a lot of the uh, uh, teaching that they do on the first day of the week. John 20, St. John chapter 20, 20 and verse 1. Read it. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark. Wait a minute now. Now she coming where? She coming to the grave where Jesus mm -hmm. was. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark. Now I'm going to interpret that word yet. Still dark. <laughs> so that means they got there before Jesus rose because they said he rose Easter Sunday morning, didn't they? Yeah, people that go to the lake. I know this one preacher went to Lake Michigan on Easter Sunday to watch the sun rise, and they all had his whole church out there. And they thought they was doing something holy. It never put dawn on them that they was actually watching the sun rise, not Jesus. But when they got there, it was still dark. Finish that. Until the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And the stone was taken away. Go ahead and read. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter uh -huh. and to the other disciple Go whom ahead. Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. I mean, he was gone, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. All of it. And you might lay this to mind, too, the next funeral you have when they say that's not uh, uh, Sister Jackson down there. That's just her body. If she was gone to heaven looking down on you, you should not have seen none of her That's in that right. box, shouldn't you? 
Because Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And what you do, you do what your captain do. Your captain, all of them got up and left. Shouldn't be nobody in the box. So he was gone. And it was still dark. So that debunks that old lie that he rose on Easter Sunday morning, don't it? That's why we keep Sunday, because Christ rose on Easter Sunday. Well, it didn't rise on Easter Sunday, according to this. Then why are you keeping Sunday? But I ain't going to get into that. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So Peter and John, that other is talking about John, they went to the disciple because they didn't really believe it. But when, they, but when they got there, let's see if they found it. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. So he wasn't there. So they went on back home. Go ahead and read. But Mary stood without as the sepulcher we at the sepulcher weeping. Uh -huh. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. So she was still trying to find out what didn't happen here. But then Jesus was there and he spoke to her. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. That mean that uh, he was gone? And she wanted to know where you laid him. Mm. Don't you know a guy called me and wanted to argue with me about what does it mean about uh, why did they thought she, he, that she thought, think he was the gardener? Was it the way he dressed? I'm just listening. I missed the whole point. <laughs> they wanted to argue about how did she know, think that he was a gardener. Come on, man. But anyway, she thought it was a gardener. She said, look, tell me where you laid him and we'll take him away. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, uh -huh. which is to say, Master. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, uh -huh. for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Now when, he, when she realized who he was, she wasn't getting ready to grab it, but he said, touch me not. Mm -hmm. I have not ascended to my father. He was the first fruit. He had to be accepted, sisters and brothers. And the Lord said, I don't want you to eat parched corn or nothing else until you made that wave shell. He had to be accepted because he was the first fruit. But then let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and prove it. We're just showing you what's written in the book. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15 chapter. And we're going to start at verse 20. Because Jesus had risen, sister and brother. And when was the woman there? When did she oh. see him? It was on the first day of the week. Didn't it say on the first day of the week? That's when he was waved on the first day of the week. Not rising. He rose on the seventh day. Because man ain't got no, but seven days. When Jesus came in the flesh, he was man. That's why he called himself the son of man. But at the end of the seventh day, there is no more man. Verse 20, go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. And become what? The first fruits of them that slept. So now we know then why Mary couldn't touch him. Because the law is said, don't eat parched corn or anything else until it has been waved and accepted. So he's the first fruit. Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Go ahead. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Now we understand. They explain this clearly, don't you? Mm -hmm. So when you read something like this here, say, oh, it said, 
everyone in his own order. Christ, the first fruit, and those that are here at his coming. That's what you call learning something on your way to learning something. So when somebody said, my mama's in heaven, you say, is Christ here? <laughs> he ain't here, then your mama's not in heaven. Where is she? Genesis, the third chapter, says she's in the ground. Christ, the first fruit, and those that are here at his coming. See, now, the next batch of fruit, sisters and brothers, is not going to be way before the Lord until after the Sabbath day. That means you're going to have the first resurrection and the second resurrection. In the first resurrection, they're going to help Christ move a rule is earth, but still they haven't been accepted. You know why? Because you have to have tomorrow after the Sabbath day. And when Jesus finished ruling, it's going to be on the seventh day. That's why Jesus had to rise on the seventh day to let you know there is no more man. So you're going to get the first resurrection and the last resurrection, but the wave is not going to be made until tomorrow after the Sabbath day. Now let's go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23. See, we learn stuff as we go along, sisters and brothers. I used to think that Mar after the Sabbath day, Pentecost represented the day that Jesus came. I used to teach that until the Lord showed me different. Then I had to reverse it. Brothers said, well, you know, I have one minister that called me all the time, and I made a reversal with the scripture. He didn't call me back no more. I guess you say, this guy can't be reliable. He's going to get me to teach something. If you find out that he's wrong, he's going to change on me. I sure am. I'm not going to get cut off just to save my face. You tell a lie to save your faith or live with it, your face gets to be burnt off in the lake of fire. Leviticus 23 and verse 15. Leviticus 23 and verse 15. Now, we done made that uh, a wave share, and we know what it means. And then know it had to be accepted before the Lord. Go ahead and read. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, uh -huh. from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So now from that day, that first day, you got to count seven Sabbaths. Go ahead and read. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. 50 mean Pentecost. Mm -hmm. You got to... Seven, count start at one, go seven Sabbath plus one, that's 50 days. Go ahead and read. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. And you're going to offer a new meat offering to the Lord. Go ahead. Ye shall bring out of your ha habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. Uh -huh. They shall be a fine flour. Go ahead. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Now, the first one didn't have no leaven, but this had leaven. What mean? These are people that have sinned but have been purged. Y'all understand? This is from among us. Jesus never committed a sin. But everybody in here have committed a sin. If you say you're not, you ain't did it, then you just committed a sin because you lied. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And you shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish. Now the first thing, it was a he lamb, one he lamb without blemish is the first year. Now it's seven years without blemish. Why they got the blemish? Because they've been purged by the blood. Y'all understand? Now they ain't got no blemish. Go ahead and read. Seven lambs without blemish of the first year, uh -huh. and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Now skip down to verse 21 and read it. And you shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. Uh -huh. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. Now this one he said you should do no servile work. The other work was, was, was no matter of work. Two different days, Sister Brown. Two different uh, uh, directions. But it's going to be, but you keep this throughout your generation, Sister Brown. Now this 
new meat offering. There's these seven lambs, which, which is complete. Now, these are talking about the people in the first resurrection from among us now. Well, Jesus then made the other one, and when he come, then he's going to raise those of us that have made it in the first resurrection. That don't mean that another other one is not going to make it, that's going to have to stand in judgment, but why, you, why should you take a chance when you can do it all right now and make that first resurrection? I don't need to play Russian roulette with your eternal life. But being that we don't have a... a, 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 a Tomorrow after the Sabbath day, sisters and brother, when Jesus ruled his earth, the first and the last and people that's making it in the resurrection, they got to all be offered up together. Y'all understand? Because it cannot be offered up on no other day but tomorrow after the Sabbath day. And that makes a big difference and you're going to see it before you're out of here. Now let's go into Acts. The second chapter. Acts the second chapter, because this is when they were uh, uh, celebrating Pentecost. You know, they said well, this is when the church took over from Israel. You know, that's what they're talking about, don't you? And the buzzword of church is, is uh, like uh, this when the uh, Catholic and the so called Christian took over. And that's always puzzled me. I'm going to show you why it puzzled me. Acts 2, and let's start at verse 1. Acts 2 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Because the Lord said, have a code of convocation. So wherever you are, you're supposed to go to places the Lord choose. And they ain't talking about your living room with your two, with your five children and your husband. Go ahead and read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Uh -huh. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, we explain all this in detail when we on the day that we have these mm -hmm. particular ones. But this one, we can't get in all the details, but we're going to give you the summation of it. Go ahead and read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Go ahead. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh-huh. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. I must be reading this wrong. There was dwelling in Jerusalem Gentile Jews. Jews. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. That meant devout, meaning these guys was on it and they knew about it. And they didn't play with it. But it said Jews. This set the precedence when it started naming all them other ones from all these other, then but still the set the president has already been set Jews. I tell people how, hey, well, you know, this is a church. I say, y'all don't keep the Passover night. Don't keep Pentecost night. Right. Like I asked the Pentecost, do you keep the Pentecost? What's that? Go ahead and read. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. That's when they, when they, when they heard, when they heard them, uh, when they saw them tongue and the, and and these people that's teaching. I'm gonna show you what confounded them. Go ahead and read. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's what confounded them. I speak English. I don't speak Spanish. I don't speak Russian. I don't speak Italian. I don't speak nothing but English. But these guys were speaking Hebrew. Right. Now, brother, get up and start speaking Hebrew to me. It'd be just like uh, me trying to read that white wall there. Ain't nothing on it. I won't hear nothing. But these was, they was devout men. And they said so they heard them speak the word of God in their own language. What verse? We have verse 7. Go ahead. And they were all amazed and marveled. Go ahead. Saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Are not all these which speak Jews? Galileans. Are not all these which speak Israelites? Galileans. Why did they say Galileans? Because everybody there was a Jew or an Israelite. That's right. There was no stranger there. Was no Greek there. Was no Russian there. Was no Arabian there. Nothing but Israelites. Go ahead. 
And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? See, that's what them, them, them flower tongue, they was translating. How is it that we hear these guys speaking in our own tongue when we was born? Skip now to verse 13 and go ahead. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Look, sister and brother, I done got drunk. I'm telling you, I done got real drunk. Y'all don't know what drunk is. When I was stationed in California. I was so drunk, I was going back in the face, and you see them yellow lines that they put that cross in when you crosswalk? I thought they were school buses, and I'm trying to duck them. That's drunk. I done got so drunk that I lost my car. Reported stolen. Two weeks later, I went out behind one of them joints. It was called small. We called it Katangle Jungle. I went outside to get me fresh air. There my car sitting back there. <laughs> you know why? Because I was so drunk that they had to give me a ride home. That's drunk. You can't get drunk enough to speak a whole lot of languages at one time. Go ahead and read. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, uh -huh. and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. Go ahead. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose. Sin is but the third hour of the day. Go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Uh -huh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. See, he's talking about the last days. The last days is a long time, sister and brother. The last days really started with Jesus. And we are in the last other last days. That's right. He said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Even your sons and daughters. That's when women call a brother boy. Somebody, guy's talking, they wrong. Should I correct him? I said, why do you think you got this knowledge? That's the spirit of God in your head. Yeah, you do it. You just can't stand up where I am. Right. But you can sit out there and break up every lie you can with that book in your lap, mm -hmm. sister. Brothers, you don't want to uh, treat the woman like she ain't got no sense. If she didn't, she wouldn't have no brain in her head. What verse? With 18. Go ahead. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Both of them. Didn't you say that? Yep. Go ahead and read. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, Go ahead. blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Go ahead. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. So he took that on down to the coming of Jesus, sisters and brothers. And it's going to extend you clean until the coming of the kingdom, of, of, of the Father's kingdom. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what I like about this God, sister and brother. On the last day, you see your error and call on him. He said, ye shall be saved. He didn't say you might be. That's what I like about this God. Guys like me need this. I'm going to tell you like it is. He shall be saved. But, this, but Peter said the last day, Peter picked that thing up and took it on down to the coming of Jesus and beyond, sisters and brothers. Now let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter, to show you what I'm talking about. Because uh, the prophet Joel told you about it. In fact, all of the prophets, that's why you get people saying, well, you know, the New Old Testament been fulfilled. I'm going to tell you something. When the Old Testament is fulfilled, then there ain't no need for a New Testament. So how is you going to say the Old Testament for, for, fulfilled? I can teach you the first and last resurrection. I can show you the coming of the Lord. I can show you the white throne judgment. I can show you the lake of fire. None of that has happened, is it? So how is it you're going to say the, the Old Testament is, is fulfilled now? You don't have to keep it. Matthew 24, because he said, the moon, talk about the moon and the stars, 
you know, uh, and also the son. So let's go happen, see when that happened, because it ain't going to happen but one time, sisters and brothers. One time. Matthew's 24, and we're going to read verse 7. Because the Lord knows that's going. Man going to come and sit in the temple that's going to be built over there once all this carnage is through. And they're going to say, the Lord is back. He's in the temple. The Lord said, uh-uh. If they say he's in, in, in the desert, go not forth. If they say he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to come. And it ain't going to be no secret. Verse 27. Read it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And when he comes, sisters and brothers, he is coming from heaven. And Revelation, the first chapter, tell you every eye shall see him. So he ain't going to sneak up and go in some temple and all of a sudden uh, the Lord is back. And when is that going to happen? Skip down to verse 39, uh, uh, 29 and go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light uh -huh. and the stars shall fall from heaven. Now isn't and this what Peter was talking about? Yes. But who did he get it from? He got it from the prophet Joel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the power of the heavens shall be shaken. And what's going to happen? Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But what is the sign before you come? Because you're going to be there at least five That's months. Right. Probably a little longer. When that heaven rolled back like a scroll, he's just going to be sitting there on that throne. And everybody on earth is going to see him. Brother, how can we see way up in the third heaven? The books say you're going to see him. I guess God's going to do something to make you see him. That's why the people are going to call for the rocks to fall on them, for the mountain to fall on them. So there ain't going to be no secret coming. Then the Lord shall come, and when he come, what's going to happen? Read and, that again. And he shall, and, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. They're going to mourn because he's going to do a job on his earth, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That letting you know that the Lord is not going to recover Israel until he come. Nobody pays no attention. The Hebrew brothers don't pay no attention to him. The sisters and brothers that went over in Demona in the 60s, they didn't read this because they was taught that the New Testament was the devil's book. <laughs> I know I was there. 20 days, I'll be 81 years old and I know all the stories. If you go over there and look on the wall of fame, you see my cousin at the top of it, Eliahu, Landrew Bowie. So I was there. I saw it all. That let me know that Israel is not going to be recovered until the Lord come, and it ain't going to be until that seventh trumpet. That's when he's going to sin and start to gather Israel. And you ain't leaving here a day before. Y'all understand? The seven trumpets, sisters and brothers, when that seven trumpet blow, that calls to action a whole lot of things. And let's go into Leviticus 23rd chapter, back to Leviticus 23rd chapter. I'll let you know, sisters and brothers, so Peter, when he got up and said, look, the prophet Joel wrote about these. And he told about the coming of the Lord. He brought it all to pass, sisters and brothers. So being the trumpets got to be blowing, that means that the Lord got something on the trumpets too, don't it? The trumpets don't blow, ain't nothing going down. That's street talk. Trumpet don't blow, nothing is going to happen, okay? I got to keep, I got to stop doing that street talk. And we used to say in the, back in the 60s, what it is. He was, what you talking about? What it is. What you talking about? I'm saying, what's going on? What's happening? 
23 and 23. I guess sometime maybe you've been around too long. Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to start reading at verse 23. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Now, the memorial of a blowing of trumpets, that's a Sabbath. On the first day of the month, memorial of the blowing of trumpets. That have a reason for that. Go ahead and read. You shall do no servile work therein, uh -huh. but you shall offer an offering, offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So we don't do that since Jesus died. So we're gonna have a look and see what takes place when these trumpets are blown. Let's go into one they call the rapture first. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. The people tell me, well, I'm waiting for the rapture. I'm looking at the sky, seeing if an eagle or a hawk going to show up. Because that's what they call the rapture. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And nothing's happened before the trumpets blow, sisters and brothers. And the Lord showed you that. Even when he came down and gave Israel the Ten Commandments. Nothing takes place until the trumpet. That's why we have a memorial of the blowing of trumpets, sister and brother. Because if the trumpet don't blow, ain't nothing going to happen. All that simple. 4 and 13. 1 Thessalonians 4, we're going to start reading at verse 13. Okay, go ahead. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. A whole lot of people are ignorant about this, but you know, if you die right, then... You don't, they don't need to sorrow for them. You better sorrow for yourself. You're still living. Go ahead and read. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Well, you know, wait a minute. If they're flying around heaven, how is it they sleeping in Jesus? You ever seen people sleeping, walking around and talking and carrying on and flying? Uh-uh. Pay attention to what you're reading here. Go ahead and read. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord Go ahead. shall not prevent them which are asleep. Shall not prevent them which are asleep. He keep talking about dead people, don't he? Go ahead and read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh -huh. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What does the sin mean? Gonna come down from heaven. He gonna get up out of there. He don't want to be there anyway. And then the dead, at that time, the dead's going to be raised and the living's going to be changed. At what price? At what time? Go ahead and read. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. But I missed something here. The Lord shall descend with what? Oh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's what I've been looking for, that trumpet system. The trumpet, that seventh trumpet, it's going to bring Jesus. And when he started his descent, then that's when the dead going to rise. You got preachers running, uh, running around preaching, telling people, see where I see the Lord going to rapture the church off before the great tribulation. This is what you call the rapture don't take place until Jesus comes. And he's going to be on his way here. Now you got people thinking they're going to get off. That's why they're going to be running around killing preachers. Because we're waiting to leave here and we're, in, we're right in the, in, in the middle of carnage and destruction. Go ahead and read what verse? Verse 17. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, normally we go to Zechariah 14 chapter mm -hmm. and show you that you're going to be with the Lord on earth, but we ain't doing it today. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because this, we, we are looking at the first, the seventh trumpet, that trumpet that's going to cause everything to happen, sisters and brothers. I ain't going to use the word jump off.
First Corinthians, fifteen chapter. That's I'm, I'm gonna get away from my slang. I ain't talking to the dudes on the corner. And we're gonna start at verse forty-nine because when these people in the first resurrection, the book told you that Jesus is the first fruit, didn't it? And the rest of them are going to be raised at his coming. This is at his coming. But when they leave that ground, they will no longer be man, sister and brother. They will no longer be flesh and blood. Verse 49, go ahead. And as we are born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We should, because we're going to be just like the heavenly. Go ahead and read. Now this I say, brethren, uh -huh. that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now this is not talking about Jesus' kingdom. That's why I know that the Lord is going to have to offer up the whole creation, the first and the last. The morrow after the Sabbath, that's when it's over with, sisters and brothers. The first, after the first and the last resurrection, and after white throne judgment, then they're going to offer it up. So now, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Father. That's mm -hmm. what they're talking about. This is not Jesus' kingdom. Go ahead and read. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall not all die. Going to be some living people when Jesus comes, but we're going to all be changed. Go ahead. In a moment. Uh-huh. In the twinkling of an eye. Go ahead. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. How many trumpets is it? Seven, ain't it? Uh-huh. That, that trumpet again. At the last trump, the seventh trump. That's why we observe the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. He's telling you, I'm going to have seven trumpets blow, and when that seven trumpet blow, if your mind is right and you have walked correctly with God, you're going to cease to be man and become God when that seven trumpet blow. This is the thing that you need to understand. That gives you something to strive for. Because there ain't nothing on in this creation that can match that. Go ahead and read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. That's what God lived forever. If you don't die, aren't you immortal? So you was created to be an immortal. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, uh -huh. and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Go ahead. Death is swallowed up in victory. Then there will be no more dying, sisters and brothers. This is why we keeping these feasts, because the Lord is teaching us what's going on. You got seven days to become me. That's what the Lord is telling you. Seven days. And when that seventh trumpet blows, sisters and brothers, what day is going to be blown on? The day of atonement. Now let's go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, because the Lord is teaching you in this whole chapter here. This 23rd chapter is nothing but spiritual Awaken it. And what's going to take place, sisters and brothers? That's why I have a lesson, sisters and brothers, called Moses, the prophet of God throughout all generations. Because this is spiritual stuff Moses is teach, writing about here. 23, Leviticus 23, and we're going to start at verse 26. 23 and 26. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and verse 26. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you. Now, he keep telling you that these have got to be holy convocation, don't it? That means you have to come together. Like I said, not in the living room of your house. You're going, it's going to be a holy convocation unto you. Go ahead and read. And you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, Afflict your soul in this case when we, when we do the lesson. And on that day, we show you that you should fast on this day. And that means fast. And on the well, you cannot have a water fast. A fast means you don't have nothing. Go ahead and read. What verse? We're at 28. Go ahead. And you shall do no work in that same day. Now, that's, this one is you ain't going to do no work in this day. Go ahead. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Now, this atonement. Represent Jesus making atonement for you, sister and brother. 
But skip down to verse 32 and go ahead. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. That don't mean he didn't change it now. So when the sun go down on the ninth day, that begins the tenth day. So from even to evening, that means from dark to dark. So this is the day of atonement, sister and brother. And this is the day that represents when Jesus made an atonement for you, and that is when he died for you. But let's back up to Leviticus, the 16th chapter, and run this day down. Leviticus chapter 16. And we're going to start reading at verse 2. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 2. Okay, read it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Go ahead. Which is upon the ark, that he die not. Now Moses know the Lord one line, because right. God just killed his two oldest sons. That's right. Because of strange wife. So don't tell me, I don't want you to come at all times within the veil before the mercy seat. That's, That's right. in the most holy place, that you don't die now. Go ahead and read. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Now, that's when, it's until he appear, that's when you come. Mm -hmm. But you don't go every day sprinkling blood when the daily sins of this man. Only one time, and that's on the day of atonement. Go ahead and read. Thus shall Aaron come, in, come, come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. First thing you got to do is make an offering for him because he's flesh. But skip down to verse 5 and read it. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Now, so they're going to take of two kids of the goats. That's what we're interested in. The ram is for, for the priest, but the two goats is for the whole creation. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 7. Let's see what we're going to do with these two goats. Go ahead and read. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So now Aaron is going to cast lots, one for the Lord and one for the scapegoat. And let's show you what's going to happen. Keep reading. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Go ahead. But the goat on which the lot, lot failed to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Now, so the one that's going to be presented, he's going to be sacrificed. Okay? So now, we're talking Jesus here. He's going to be offered for the sin of the people. But the scapegoat, he ain't going to kill him. He going to be let go. That's why people tell you all the time, well, I ain't going to be your scapegoat. You're going to do something, I'm going to take the blame. Uh-uh. If you're scapegoat, you take the blame. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the, and before the mercy seat. Go ahead. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions in all their sins. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. Go ahead. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times. Seven times. Why seven times? Because man sinned every day mm -hmm. that God gave him seven days. So that means that somebody had to come under the blood every day. Break it before the veil seven times. Go ahead and read. And cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation Go ahead. and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Uh -huh. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat uh -huh. and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So once he 
offered to kill the goat for sin, now he's going to bring the live goat in, and Aaron going to put his hands up on the head of the live goat, and he's going to put all the sins of the people on it. You know, Armstrong used to speak that this live goat was talking about an evil spirit or a devil. Or oh, they use the word Azazel. I said, look here, I don't care what the word is. Once you see the purpose that this goat served, he cannot be no devil. You're going to put all the sins up on him. The person said to me one time, well, he's the one that called the people to sin. No, you called yourself That's to sin. Right. He just encouraged you to do what you wanted to do. Read the next verse. Go ahead. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities. So this, this goat going to bear upon him all the sins of the people. Go uh -huh. ahead and read. Unto a land not inhabited, uh -huh. and, he shall, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Not unto a land uninhabited. And he is going to let this goat go into the wilderness. Now what does it mean, land uninhabited? That represents heaven, sister and brother. You ain't, ain't no man ever went to heaven. I can read that to you, but Jesus said, and ain't no man going to go to heaven. Best you're going to do is meet him in the air in the second heaven, but then you are coming down, sister and brother. So why did he need goats? Two goats? Because God is not in the business of raising goats from the dead. Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Romans, the fifth chapter. So both of these goats represented Jesus, sister and brother, not the scapegoat represent uh, uh, Satan. That guy going to take all the sins of the people and put them on the head of Satan. Uh-uh. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to start reading that verse 8. Romans 5 and verse 8. Okay, go ahead. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So now, let's show him he loved, he loved mm -hmm. us, because while we were sinners, he still died for us. Go ahead and read. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, go ahead. we shall be saved from wrath through him. Go ahead. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Whoa. So if he didn't have no more life, then ain't nobody going to be saved, is it? See, the blood just reconciled you, sister. But you're going to be saved by his life. Right. Why is that? Because now he has to raise from the dead to walk away with the sins. Go ahead and read. And not only so. But we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. By whom we have now received the atonement. Oh, so that's what the day of atonement represents, mm -hmm. sisters and brothers. That Jesus came and died for us. Then he rose and took our sins off of us. Now the atonement is made. All you have to do is walk right and you will not get cut off. How do you walk right? Keep the commandments. Keep his dietary laws. Stop polluting his Sabbath day. And keep the feast that he told you to remind you of it so you won't get amnesia and go out and do something stupid and commit suicide. So now, Jesus Christ have made the atonement for us. All that simple. So that's why we keep the day of atonement. We have shown you what every one of these days stand for. Now let's go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, because we got a few more. Leviticus 23. Because the Lord put it this here and put it in one book. So if you study this book, you know where you're going. And actually, when you're going to get there, if I could figure, I stopped trying to do that. I spent years trying to figure out when the first day going to start. <laughs> I kept somewhere, my math kept getting off. So after a while, I said, skip it. I'm just going to roll with the sign. Leviticus 23, and we're going to start at verse 33. 23 and 33. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, 
The 15th day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Now we got the 15th day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles. How long is it? Seven, seven days. days to the Lord. He can't get away from this seven. Why? Because he's telling you, man, you got 7,000 years. You better make the best of it. Go ahead and read. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. On the first day of holy convocation, go ahead. You shall do no servile work therein. Go ahead. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. That's the same thing as the first day, don't it? Yes. Holy convocation, a holy convocation. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation. Go ahead and read. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. It is a solemn assembly, uh -huh. and you shall do no servile work therein. Well, all of God's feast days are solemn assembly, sister and brother. Even this feast of ta uh, uh, seventh day, this is a solemn assembly. We're not jiving here. We're dealing with what makes eternal life. That's very solemn, sisters and brothers. What verse was it? We just uh, finished 36. Skip down to verse 39 and go ahead. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now this can't be the same feast because they keep telling you the feast of tabernacle is seven days. That's right. First day going to be a Sabbath, and the eighth day going to be a Sabbath. So the eighth day, we're going to find out what this day is. Because we're going to see that it is tomorrow after the Sabbath day. Keep reading. And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, uh -huh. and the bowls of, the, of thick trees, and willows of the brook. Go ahead. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. He just keeps saying seven days, don't he? And you're going to keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days. Go ahead. It, is, it, is a, it shall be a statue forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Go ahead. You shall dwell in booths seven days. You're going to dwell in booths seven days. What did you, why, why did you get the booths? You went and got the tree limb and shrigs and you made a temporary dwelling. You got a brother out here. Somebody called me the other day upset. Brother said, you ain't keeping that. Y'all don't keep tabernacle right because y'all don't dwell in booths. Now, he over there under a tent. Israel had tents then? Then why did you have to go and pull the leaves off the limbs and go into the forest? You try doing that and putting it in your yard and see what the government going to do to you. Something you can't physically clear out, but you sure enough understand the spiritual meaning of it. Go ahead and read. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, uh -huh. that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths uh -huh. when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now, these booths represent temporary dwelling, and that represent this flesh and blood body. You got seven days to be flesh and blood, and after that, it's all over with. But the Feast of Tabernacle is seven days. I want you to put that on screen. Well, you got seven days twice, one under the, under the other. If this run a little over time, that's because they got a slow crew in the video room. <laughs> Blame them. Now, what do we have here? We have Weekly Sabbath day, we got the uh, Passover, we got the uh, 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 unleavened bread, and we got the Feast of Tabernacles, sisters and brothers. Seven days. But on the Feast of Tabernacles, you have to dwell in boots for seven days. Then we have a, a one with two sevens on it, on, uh, come under the head of Tabernacle. Put it up. So there you go. Tabernacle, that's man's one week, and you're going to do it? No, this is the wrong one. Y'all making me look bad out here.
Went back to the Passover. You know what I'm going to do? There we go. There I'm going to leave it alone. Stop. Stop. That's the one. That's there the one. you go. Now you see, all of them there, that ain't the way I want it, but anyway, y'all got to, got to, y'all get the drift, don't you? Feast of Tabernacle. And, and that Feast of Tabernacle is seven days, and the feast, and, the, and you dwell in boots for seven days. But he had mentioned the eighth day. Why didn't he mention, why didn't we uh, uh, put the eighth day up? Because it's not time for that, sisters and brothers. So the Feast of Tabernacle, and unleavened bread, and the weekly Sabbath day, all three of them represent the same 7,000 years that God gave man. The Lord is telling you over and over and over, you got 7,000 years to get this thing right. Do it. Because after the 7,000 years is over with, you're going to either be God or you're going to be in the lake of fire. Because once you are born, sisters and brothers, you will exist forever. That's why God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am the God of the living and not the dead. So if you were born, you're going to live forever. That's some scary stuff, ain't it? Now let's go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 16. And we're going to have a closer look at this tabernacle. And we're going to start reading at verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 13. 16 and 13. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Keep telling you, but seven days. Go ahead. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Uh-huh. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. See, this is also called the Feast of Engel. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to bring everybody for this feast. Go ahead and read. No, whether it's Israelite, Levite, stranger, whatever. Go ahead and read. Seven days shall thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. Seven and days shall you keep a solemn feast to the Lord your God. Mm-hmm. In Seven the, days, it's a solemn feast, because right. all feasts are solemn. Go ahead and read. In the place which the Lord shall choose, uh -huh. because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt re surely rejoice. Go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh -huh. and in the Feast of Weeks, Go ahead. and in the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, and, you notice, finish that. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. I thought I just wanted to read that. To make sure you drop some in that box on your way out. But still, sisters and brothers, you notice the eighth day is missing here? Yes. Why is the eighth day missing here? Because the eighth day, sisters and brothers, represent the Father's kingdom. Man ain't got but seven. Once the seventh day is over with, it is over with. Now let's go into Luke, the 22nd chapter. Because let's show you what else Jesus said. Luke chapter 27. 22, brother. Luke chapter 22. And we're going to start at verse 13. Luke 22. Luke 22, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. 22 and verse 13. Okay, read it. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. They we still talking about the Passover. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Go ahead. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
What's the word fulfill mean? Complete. That mean complete, don't it? So that mean the Passover wasn't started and completed when Jesus died. The Passover started with Jesus, but he got to go for the whole seven days. That's why the priest went before the veil and sprinkled the blood seven times. So the blood cover every generation of man. Go ahead and read. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Go ahead. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. He making it clear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to drink. We ain't going to have this Passover no more until the kingdom of God is here. What? That's the Father's kingdom, mm -hmm. sister and brother. Like I say, I used to say Jesus is going to rule this earth for a whole thousand years. You're not going to have no Passover? No. Because as long as you got flat Passover coming, going on, that means some sin has to be passed over. And he cannot fulfill it as long as you got flesh and blood living. So he ain't going to keep it no more until he do it in the Father's kingdom. And let's go into Revelation 21st chapter and see what kingdom is that, that is. Revelation chapter 21. There's a lot of people get upset and they come, you know, y'all, 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 you know, y'all debunking everything. Well, we ain't doing nothing. We reading this book. If this kills what you've been studying all your life, then that means you have not been studying this book. This is the same book you got. This ain't no strange book or no funny book. That's why we like people to bring their own Bible. So you won't be uh, asking somebody, let, 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 let me see that book you got. Look at your own book. It's the same thing. So this is the Father's kingdom. This is the one that Jesus is going to keep the Passover in. Verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Go ahead. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's the place where Jesus went to prepare your place in, by the way. But go ahead and read. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This is the house of many mentions that's coming down. And he's going to come to be among us. We ain't going there to be with him. He don't want to stay in heaven. Go ahead and read. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I mean, he's going to wipe all of it. There ain't going to be no more death, no pain, no nothing. Why? Because if there ain't no more death, then there ain't no more flesh and blood, is it? Skip down to verse 6 and read it. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now, he's letting you know. See, I'm, I, you know I'm, the, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the one that was with you, and I'm the one at the end. And I'm going to give you the waters of life freely. In other words, everybody here is immortal. They've already drank to the water of life, sister and brother. There is no flesh and blood in this kingdom. Everybody is God, sisters and brothers. And this thing, the beginning of the Passover and the completion of the Passover was shown by the operation of Israel, sisters and brothers. Let's give you a good example of what I'm talking about. Because uh, this thing started with Moses, and he told you to put the lamb up on the tenth day, didn't he? Now, let's go into uh, uh, Exodus chapter 15. I left my scripture out of here. Let's go to uh, uh, Exodus. I think that's I'm going to get it now. It's Exodus. Is this Exodus, the, yeah. the first chapter? Yeah, Exodus, Exodus the 12th chapter. Yep. Okay. I tell you, I get too uh, involved in my own stuff. I don't be rushing. I ain't lying. I get, up, I get off into this, and I really get caught up in my own lesson. Because I love this stuff. 
over 55 years and I still love it. Because I want to remind you of this so we can put it back to back. Even though we've done this before, I want to look at it. Exodus 12, Exodus 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus 12 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh -huh. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, Go ahead. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Now skip down to verse 5 and continue, because we've already uh, uh, talked that over. Go ahead and read. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Go ahead. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh -huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So you know that ram represents Jesus, don't you? Mm -hmm. Skip now to verse, verse 12 seven, verse and go seven. ahead. 5 through 7. Uh, 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 verse 5, rather than go ahead. No, verse 7. Huh? Verse 7, read yeah. it. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And we know why that is, don't That's we? Right. Skip down to verse 12 and continue. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, Go ahead. both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So the Lord is going to come through and kill everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to execute judgment? He said, because I am the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Go ahead. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So we've gone through that. So skip down to verse 29 now. Verse 29, and go ahead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, Go ahead. and all the firstborn of cattle. And he did that. So what happened then? Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. That's why they had their staff in their hand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Now, that's when they threw him out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, uh -huh. and be gone and bless me also. Well, I got education there, didn't mm -hmm. But look, sisters and brother, that began, that began Israel journey. The journey started on Passover. And we're going to show you that the journey is going to end on the same thing. It started in Egypt and it's going to end in the promised land, which represents the kingdom of God. Now let's go to Joshua now. Let's look at let's see how they ended this journey that started in Egypt. Joshua, the fourth chapter. Joshua, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1, and we're going to skip down. Joshua, chapter 4. And verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, now look, the Lord dried up the Jordan River just like he dried up the Red Sea. Now all, and when all of them had got through across the uh, River Jordan, then the Lord spoke unto Moses. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and read it. Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Now, because he told the priest, you go with the ark of the testimony, and you go, when, when your feet hit the Edge of the, hit the water in Jordan, it's going to dry up. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go and I want you to stand in the middle of the uh, uh, River Jordan on dry ground until all the people pass over. Now he's telling them, now tell the priest to come up out of Jordan. So he wants to let the water start to flow again. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19 and go ahead. 
And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. Wait a minute. They came across Jordan, out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first That's month? That's right. Ain't that the day that the Lord said put the lamb up? Yep. To let you know, you was here in the beginning and I want you to be here in the end. Tenth day of the first month. Go ahead and read. And those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. Go ahead. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Go ahead. Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. Just like Moses them came across the Red Sea. Go ahead and read. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until ye were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. Okay, now put that up on the board right quick. Where they come across Egypt, uh, uh, the Red Sea, and also the Jordan River. Put it up right quick. They get it. They get it. Uh, okay, see at the top there? They left Egypt, which was starting to pass over. They went across, the, God dried up the Red Sea. Then they traveled for 40 years. And when they got to the Jordan River, God dried it up too. And when they crossed the Jordan River, they was in the promised land, which really represent the kingdom of God, sister and brother. Because the promised land was the end of their journey. So now, when they got into the kingdom of God, that was after the seven days. They ended up in the kingdom on the eighth day. Did y'all pay attention to that? Now let's go to Joshua, the fifth chapter. Joshua chapter five. In fact, put, that, put it back up there before I go there. Put it back up because I want to make another point. See, this is it. But now you got the seven days. With all seven days, you got blood on each seven day because every day man had to be forgiven. And at the end of the seventh day, they crossed was the, was the eighth day. And the eighth day was the Father's kingdom. That's why the Lord said, Tabernacle is seven days, the week is seven days, unleavened bread is seven days. In other words, you got 7,000 years. And at the end of that 7,000 years, now it's the Father's kingdom. And that is the eighth day. Y'all understand? Now let's go into Joshua, the fifth chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Joshua 5 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, uh -huh. that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. They knew they was in trouble. Go ahead and read. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Now they run away. They, circum they said, make sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. So they had to circumcise them. Skip down to verse 6 and continue. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. Unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. So he purged out the rebels, all the, even though they were circumcised. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. So the Lord allowed that to happen because he had a point to make. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. 
Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal until this day. Go ahead. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month that evening in the plains of Jericho. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? They come across on the 10th day, they got circumcised, and then kept the Passover on the 14th day of the same month. God is telling you something. Circumcision means the wrong and wear the flesh. There ain't going to be no flesh in the Father's kingdom. It's just like a woman's monthly. It's seven days, and on the eighth day, she is clean. Why? Because there ain't going to be no blood or flowing, and there ain't going to be no unclean person in the Father's kingdom. Y'all see how the Lord has laid, laid that thing out? Not just the male, but the female too. What verse? We have verse 11. Go ahead. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Now they, I'm, I'm going to fix that. They did eat of the old corn, uh, corn of the land. They didn't eat no meat. Now, on the morrow after the Passover, uh -huh. go ahead. Unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self-same day. So they did that on the day of Pentecost first, nothing but corn on the land, and then the 15th day, they added something else. We go ahead and read. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So the Lord cut the, Canaan, the, the, uh, the manna that he gave them in the wilderness. Well, no more need for that. Because they was in the land now, the promised land, and that promised land represented, sisters and brothers, the Father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no flesh. That's why he had to roll. That's why the Lord did that quick. Time they got over there. Make you some sharp knives now, Joshua, and circumcise these babies. And he did it. The roll in the way of the flesh, sisters and brothers. Now, mm -hmm. let's go into John, the seventh chapter. See, because once they got in the promised land, that represented the Father's kingdom. That wasn't Jesus' kingdom no more. So all that we read is talking about the Father's kingdom. That's why that eighth day is called that great day of the feast. Nobody pays stuff like that attention. Let's go into St. John the seventh chapter. St. John chapter seven. Because I know there's a whole lot of stuff, but I know one thing, y'all understanding this. You know why I know you understand it? Because it's so simple. St. John 7, we're going to start reading at verse 1. St. John chapter 7, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. So it, in every generation, Israel has hated Jesus. Ain't that something? Go ahead and finish that. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Uh-huh. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Skip down to verse 14 and read it. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Now about the midst of the feast of tabernacle, he went up into the temple and taught. Now skip down to verse 30, 37. Let's see what he said. Verse 37. Go ahead. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Wait Jesus a minute. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Mm -hmm. If there was talking tabernacle, how can the seventh day of tabernacle be higher than the first day of tabernacle, mm -hmm. being the first day was a Sabbath day. That's right. He's a tabernacle. So the only day, that last day that he's talking about, that great day of the feast, that's mm -hmm. talking about the eight-day feast. But there ain't no flesh and blood. Everybody's immortal. What can be greater than being immortal? Read that whole verse. Go ahead. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, that's, that's the last day. It's over with now. 
Seventh day is gone. Let's go quickly to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and that'll be, and I got one more after this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm just showing you how the Lord nailed this thing to the, to the wall so it cannot be disattached. If you want to know the truth, he put it out here. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to start reading at verse 24. 15 and verse 24. Okay, go ahead. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Uh -huh. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Now this Jesus reign, his kingdom. He got to do that until he put all enemies under his feet. Go ahead. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So death is an enemy. Don't belong here. That's right. You never started dying. Had Adam and Eve done the right thing, we wouldn't know about death. So the last enemy that Jesus is going to destroy is death. He's going to terminate it. Go ahead. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, accepted, which did put all things under him. That means that Jesus is accepted and everybody that come with him in the first resurrection. Then he's accepted. Go ahead and read. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, uh -huh. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, uh -huh. that God may be all in all. That God may be all in all. Everybody's God now at this time. At the end of the seventh day, the seventh day is past. That's why Jesus said he wasn't going to have the Passover until he do it again in his Father's kingdom. Now once you get into, at that time, tomorrow after the Sabbath day, he's going to wave the whole creation before the Father, and the Father's going to accept it. It's over with. Let's go and look at the last scripture. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter. That's why I tell you people don't understand that the Old Testament have a whole lot of stuff that have to be fulfilled. Ezekiel chapter 43. Ezekiel chapter 43. That's why you have to pay attention to the prophecy sisters and brothers. Sometimes testimony, you can get a little fuzzy. But Peter said we have a most sure word of prophecy. And prophecy is on the dime all the time. We're going to start at verse 25. Ezekiel 43 and verse 25. Okay, read it. Seven days shall thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. Ain't that something we said that blood had to be in, in every day? Mm -hmm. Seven days you have to do it for a sin offering. Go ahead and read. They shall also prepare a young bullock uh -huh. and a ram out of the flock Go ahead. without blemish. Go ahead. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. Seven days shall you purge the altar and purify it and consecrate yourself for seven days. Go ahead and read. And when these days are expired, uh -huh. it shall be that upon the eighth day. And when these days are expired, it shall be that on the eighth day, go ahead. And so forward. Uh -huh. The priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar. That is the, that's the, that's, that's the one that's going to be waved before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And your peace offering. And your peace offering. And I will accept you, saith the Lord God. Then that's when he's going to accept the creation. Mm -hmm. On the eighth day and forward, sisters and brothers. So this Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, is telling you all it's going, what the Lord is doing. We're going to put one more graph on this board, and that's it. One more graph. Put it up. The last one I told you about. Don't get it. All right. Now look at it now. The Lord have got this thing ironclad, tight. Seven days, weekly Sabbath day. Seven days, Feast of Unleavened Bread. Seven days, Feast of Tabernacle, where you're going to dwell in boots for seven days, which represent this fragile body. And on the eighth day is the completion 
of the fulfillment of the Passover, and that can only be done in the Father's kingdom. Y'all understand? Okay, then. That's all I have to say. Thank you.